Hello and welcome, Midshipman Saka here. And yeah, it's going to be a good match. Who have we got? So, top tier, effectively. And a good mix of ships this time around. This is going to be slightly different to my previous couple of vids. I'm actually going to do a little bit of Im information on the Clemson because it was really much a workhorse of the American Navy. It did an awful lot of things, even though it was a pre-war destroyer, and I say pre-war, designed and built just after the First World War, so you're talking 1920s, it actually served right until the end. And that's not helpful when someone's just planned. So just capture their flag, see what happens. One side defend, the other push. Great. Well, I think most people are going... Looking at that, mid and east. So, good group going this way. I'm going to play peekaboo around here. So, the Clemson class destroyer. She was one of the last flush deckers of the American US Navy. And mean by flush deck, because she had all her guns along one plane. If you compare it to a later class, like the Mohan class, you notice there's a pronounced forecastle at the front of the ship. In total, the Americans actually built well over 200 of these flush decker class destroyers, including the Wicks and Clemson class. This is actually an incredibly large number, and most of these destroyers were actually built after the First World War. The Americans just didn't stop their building program. This led to a lot of destroyers being surplus to requirements. A number of them got uh, mothballed ready for a later in time, and about 25 of them, including the USS Hendon, were actually given to the US Coast Guard to help with the prohibition and the stopping of run runners off the US coast. I'll pick up the story of USS Hendon later, but now we're going to go back to the first salvos of this match. Yeah, I'm going to not be in that um, tight space with bombers around. Oof! Holy moly! Told you. <laughs> uh, is good enough? Might be. Yay! Hit. He slowed up a touch. Hey. Wicks. Another Wicks. Oh, here he comes. I'm detected again. Ah, oh, God's sake. By what? Oh, man, he's got me done. I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to come fight against the Kuma. So, as I run for the hills, um, I'll go back to our story. I mentioned before about the USS Herndon being a good example of what actually happened to some of these ships. So, in 1920, she was commissioned into the US Navy. As soon as she was almost finished that, in 1922, she was put into storage for later use. Which was actually quite common for ships of this age, what with the new treaties being signed in Washington. Which limited the size of the major nations' navies, in particular Japan, USA and Great Britain. The lack of political will had a major effect on the US Navy, and particularly destroyers. It was a full decade before they actually laid down their next class of destroyer, which was the Farragut class. In 1934, it doesn't end there. With the outbreak of hostilities in 1939 in Europe, there was a need for America to protect its shores. So they set up neutrality patrols, and a lot of these ships ended up on them. Our USS Herndon ended up in the Caribbean. Her sister ship, the USS Reuben James, was in the North Atlantic and far closer to the action. So close that in, whilst escorting HX-156 convoy, she was torpedoed by a U-boat. This happened in October 1941, 
three months prior to the America officially entering the war. Of the 120 people on board, only 44 were actually plucked from the water. Quite rightly, it caused headline news across America, but yet it didn't sway the government to actually join the war. I'm not entirely sure why, but this was the decision it made. Anyway, let's go back to the action now, because it's just going to start to hot up. He's still not seeing me. Now he's seen me. Now I'll pull smoke. Slope generator started. Detected. Defending the base is our primary objective. I'm not able to help you. All forces protect the base. Smoke screen set. God dear, got him. <sighs> he walked straight in those torps. Clemson. Why is he saying he's good? Why is he going me? I'm defending the ruddy base. Did quite a good job at it, too. <laughs> Anyway, enough of that. Moving on. No story about the flush decker destroyers of the American Navy would be complete without talking about the destroyers for bases agreement, where over 40 of these flush deckers were handed over to the British Navy, and these were then became the town class destroyers. The most famous of these has got to be the HMS Campbelltown. Now I'm not going to dwell on her because there's been some fantastic material done by the mighty jingles on her but to say her contribution was as small is an understatement so let's go back to the USS Herndon she turned out to be the renamed the HMS Churchill where she was rearmed and reconfigured for convoy work she served in this role effectively right until 1944 then she was handed over to the Soviet Navy there she was renamed the Delatantly, apologies for my horrendous pronunciation, where she carried on her convoy escort work in the very notorious Koala Inlet until 1945, when sadly she was sunk by a German U boat. So, for such an obsolescent destroyer at the start of the Second World War, I never actually realised how many nations used them and for many different purposes. So, she started off as being a US Navy, then US Coast Guard, back to the US Navy, then was handed over to the British, and then finally handed over to the Russians. And this is only part of the story. A lot of these were converted to be fast transports, fast combi escorts, landing craft carriers, and I just haven't had the chance to actually explain that. You never know, we might do that in another series. Let's go back to the action and let the game run out. Wow. 
That worked. Although it wasn't me. I uh, hit him with a torpedo in the end as well. Ooh. Okay. I'm quite happy with how we're done today. Uh, yeah, just keep on swimming, I think. Keep on sailing. I-7. So it's just going to be me and this battleship. Kansas. HG loaded. Excellent. Let's wait till he fires. Now. He's on fire in like two or three places. He's a good shot too. Oh, it's rear guns! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Ah! And I got shot from somewhere else as well. I say I forgot to use my smoke but anyway I hope you enjoyed that folks please like and comment in the below and give me any hints and tips to how to make these better and I'll just leave you now with my final comments and the results screen nicely done third on points happy that's it those did very fantastically well and that's a that Kumar that ran into my torpedoes and credits in XP. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Thank you very much.